Suddenly, they bump into each other. The man gets upset with it and starts to argue with the woman. He accuses her of being irresponsible and careless. The woman says that he was the one who bumped into her. The man says that he was talking to someone very important and that he won't let her ruin his day. The woman mocks the man, saying that she's really sorry for annoying the man who always arrives late. The man gets really upset and covers her mouth to stop her from speaking. He says that he will only release her if she promises to remain quiet about it. The woman tries to free herself, and the man claims to be able to stay there for any amount of time she wants. The woman bites his hand and releases herself. The man says that she's a savage woman. The woman says that he's a moron. The man says that she just gave him rabies. The woman says that in that situation, he should go and see a vet. The man says that he can see it. The woman tells the man to shut his stinking mouth and go away. The man says that he will, and they leave. Later that day, the young man's mother complains to the man that he's late. He tells his mother that he knows it and explains that he's sorry because he had a problem on his way there. Almost simultaneously, the girl that bumped into him approaches her dad. He asks what she's been up to and explains that he was waiting for her. The girl tries to explain what happened, but she then realizes that the man she despises is right in front of her. She angrily asks the man what he's doing there. The young man accuses her of stalking him. The girl tells him to stop being stupid because she would never do such a thing because she isn't stupid. The young man's mother is surprised to know that they already know each other. The young woman says that she doesn't. The man explains to his mother that they bumped into each other in the street, but he doesn't even know her name. The woman says that, in that case, she would like to introduce him to his new wife. The man is shocked to hear it and asks his mother what she's on about. The girl tells her father that he must be having a laugh. Her father explains that it's not a joke and that they need to do that because of his company's deals. He explains that he always told her that something like that could happen at some point. The woman says that she knew it, but she thought he would choose someone better than that. The man says that he's the only one capable of helping her reach the social ranks. He then tells his mother that he doesn't want people like that working with her, so he's officially refusing the deal because he won't marry a woman like that. His mother says that she won't give him that option because that decision isn't solely based on business, but also because she wants grandchildren to look after them. She says that she had enough of his moronic behavior towards women. The man tells his mother that she must be mental to want to force him to marry a woman like that. He says that the kind of thing she's doing is super outdated for the 21st century. The mother says that she doesn't care and will go ahead with it because she wants. The young woman says that she won't marry that idiot either. Her father says that she will, whether she likes it or not. He then forces her to have a word with her future husband. The man looks into her eyes and says that there's nothing she can do to make him fall in love with her, and that she doesn't have what it takes to please a man like him. He says that she's uneducated and disgusting. The woman says that she doesn't give a damn about a stupid, arrogant moron like him and that she has despised him since the time she met him. She says that his selfishness is enough to make him a suitable option in the whole world. After some time, the pair is still forced to marry, despite their real feelings. At the wedding, the man reminds the woman that she told him that he was the last man she would ever marry, and there they are, ready to spend the rest of their miserable lives together. He taunts the woman, calling her a lovely princess. The woman tells the man to shut his gob. The woman says that she hopes he dies very soon. The young man says that he's as strong as nails. The woman says that that's a real shame. The man turns around and tells the woman that he's looking forward to their honeymoon, touching her hair. The woman says that she doesn't have any high hopes, but she will see what he's capable of doing. The man says that he hasn't done that for ages. The woman says that she can kind of guess someone ugly like him. The man puts his hands on her back and asks if she's sure about that. The woman gets up and says that she's 100% sure. The man says that perhaps she would like to give him a chance to practice. The woman says that she doesn't want to be disappointed. The young man says that he's sure he can surprise her. She says that she doesn't really want to test it and advises the man to fetch his sleeping bag because he won't sleep with her. The man says that she doesn't have a sleeping bag. The woman says that's her decision and if he doesn't like it, he can always sleep on the floor and leave. The man gets really upset and says that the woman is intolerable. He ends up sleeping on the sofa. Suddenly, the woman approaches him and wakes him up. Eventually, the couple starts to break their barriers of disgust and hate, even in moments where the man has to tolerate and shove his wife's disgusting food up his gob. The arrogant man learns a new lifestyle that used to disgust him. Love springs over time, and the man starts to share daily life moments with his wife. 
One day, the woman is quietly sleeping in her bed when the man approaches to check her up in secret. He bumps on the door by accident and wakes her up. Confused, the woman asks what he's doing there. She tells him to leave. The man said that he just wanted to check if she's okay. The woman asks what he needs. The man says that he has to admit that he can't stand sleeping on the sofa any longer because his back is killing him. He says that he needs some proper sleep in a normal bed. The woman refuses to give him a chance to sleep with him. The man promises not to touch her in bed. The woman still looks reluctant to give him a chance. The man says that he needs a good night of sleep because sleeping on the couch is damaging his work performance. The woman says that he will allow him to sleep there, but if he touches her, she will literally kill him. The man says that she would never touch her without permission. The woman then agrees to share her bed with her husband. The man tries to fall asleep next to his wife, but struggles to do so. He asks the woman why she's struggling to sleep as well. The man asks if she wants to talk. The woman says that she only wants to sleep in peace. The man says that he knows she's feeling a bit strange about sharing the bed. The woman says that he's right. Her husband says that it feels strange and unusual. The wife asks what he's on about. The man says that it feels different from sleeping alone and that they've been married for months, yet they never tried that. The woman says that their marriage is a farce. The husband says that he feels that they're the ones who are intentionally trying to make it harder. His wife says that she's going to sleep. Her husband turns his back to her and they fall asleep. One day, leaving his house, Isaiah is greeted by a woman named Carla. She says that it's a lovely surprise to see him. Isaiah says that she looks gorgeous. His wife is right behind him. Carla asks, how's the chick behind him? She says that it doesn't matter and that she wants to know if he still kisses as he used to. Isaiah says that he's sure he has improved it even more. Carla says that she would love to try it. Isaiah's wife pushes Carla away and says that she will have to stick to her imagination. Carla calls the woman stupid. The wife says that she won't allow her to say those things to her husband. Carla asks Isaiah if he's going to say something to the mad woman next to her. Isaiah shrugs. Carla calls them two idiots and leaves. As Carla leaves, Isaiah asks her wife what happened to her hatred for him. He says that she sounded jealous of him. His wife says that it's not jealousy, but he really should choose someone better. The man says that he really wanted to show his affection to her, but it's not up to him anymore. His wife says that she doesn't need to. Isaiah pulls her next to him and kisses her lips. She slaps his face, and her husband apologizes for doing that without asking. Isaiah tells her that he knows she's a very honest woman, so he wants to know if the way she feels for him has changed at least a bit. Isaiah gets on his knees and says that it's very easy to end up that farce if she wants, and that he really needs her to tell him her true feelings for him. His wife says that she doesn't really know what to say and that she's very confused by the whole situation. Isaiah, still on his knees, asks if she hates him. His wife shakes her head in denial, and her husband asks why she's so aloof. His wife says that she really tries not to be. Isaiah says that in that case, they should give their relationship a go. The woman nods and lets Isaiah hug her. Their parents watch them hide in the bushes with a big smile on their faces. Isaiah's father tells the girl's mother that he knew they would click. The mother says that he was right and that they're the perfect couple. The woman finally decides to show her affection to the man she once despised from the bottom of her heart.